everything is set up. Um, my delivery, I'm starting IV antibiotics. Um, we're doing home hospital this time. Good morning guys. It's a beautiful sunny fall day and I'm just sitting here in the window while the sun's coming in doing some editing and I looked outside. Mary and Ollie are looking pretty cute right now. I think they're soaking up some sun and uh, here. <laughs> Let's try to get a better shot of this. You too. Hello. Good morning, honey. Good morning. How you doing today? Doing all right. You talked to your doctor this morning? Yeah, everything's getting set up. Everything is set up. Um, my delivery, I'm starting IV antibiotics. Um, we're doing home hospital this time. Yep. Um, we decided just to um, try it at home now that I have a local blood lab that I can go to because that's one of my biggest challenges during IVs is that my blood counts start going crazy. So um, we'll start IVs. I just had lab work done. So we've got my baseline labs and then um, we will start IVs today and get labs in a few days. And So we're going to start continuous meropenem and IV Cipro. Um, not continuous Cipro, but continuous Meropenem. And so, we'll get that set up, and yeah, like Mary said, we'll have home hospital. Peter's drone just started beeping and I immediately was like, oh, I thought it was my IV beeping, which I'm not even hooked up yet. But you did take it to the home care company and they're delivering it in a few hours. Yep, so we should probably stick a needle in me. Guess what, guys? We just got the delivery. You sound so excited. It's such an exciting thing. Not exactly, but <laughs> now we gotta stick a needle in Mary's chest and so she has. Oh, this box is just saline and heparin. The drugs are in the other box downstairs. And here's her pump and batteries. Let's get this party started. What kind of party are you going to? You ready for this? One of the benefits of having a port is that we can start IVs at home on our own. Yep. So Mary, we access Mary's port and it's good to go and now Mary's unboxing her medicines. There it is. There it is. I put the needle in your chest. So the way that we do it, because we are, we take care of my port, we don't have a, a nurse do it. Um, the home care company sends my medications. my port and then once the medications get here we can hook it up <coughs> and they usually send three to five or three to seven days worth depending on the stability of the drug but another way that a home care can work 
if you're going to start IVs at home, if you aren't somebody who does their own port, the nurse would come out and access the port, or if you go get a pick line and then come home and do the medications. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Yeah, and you've done it a lot of different ways throughout the years. Yeah, I've done it, um, well, before I had a port, I would go get a pick line and then come home, and by the time we get home from the hospital, the medications have probably arrived at my house. And then, back then, a nurse would come out and just verify that everything looks good and is ready to hook up and everything. And then through college, I would access my own port. And then, depending on what medications I was going on, the, the new hospital I was at in Chicago, I would have to be admitted. Yeah, they'd admit the you first. whenever you'd start an antibiotic that you hadn't done there. Right. So even if I had done it at a previous hospital, they needed to see me do it to make sure I wouldn't have an anaphylactic reaction to it. Um, but then I would go back to my dorm after, like, two days in the hospital, I think. Yeah, it would depend. I remember you, one time you were in Chicago, and I think it was when you did Vank. Oh. And had right man syndrome, and I think you were there for a little while. Oof. And then when we first got married, we did most of my IVs at home. Yeah. And then if I needed to do a dose... To make sure I didn't react, we would do it at the infusion center. You, well, sometimes. You, you guys have seen well, us do like IVIG at the infusion center at the hospital. Yeah. But when we first got married, Mary would be, I think the first few times she went on IV, she was admitted at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But just for a few days. Yeah. More recently, we've been doing, we've been starting in the hospital and doing kind of as long as it takes to get my blood figured out. Yeah and my levels, but now that I'm not able to go on topramycin, the, the levels don't matter because I'm not on topramycin. And now that we have a good lab nearby, I don't know, we're just, we're gonna try and see. Yeah, and, um, hopefully Mary's blood uh, cooperates, okay. yeah. There's also benefits to being in the hospital, but there's also um, some risks as well. Um, I trust my hospital and I'm really, really thankful that I feel safe when I'm there as far as infection control. Um, they are so, so conscientious and cautious about infection control and not bringing germs into my room and not bringing my germs out of my room. So I feel fairly safe. I feel very safe at my hospital, but the risk is still there. I'm still in a, an environment with other sick people. Yeah. So, there's also the benefit of doing um, chest PT at the hospital, which we can still do here, but we don't have the bed that goes all the way down. So there's like benefits yeah. and, but we're, we both felt really like, let's try this at home this time. And let's see how this goes, which turns out good because we have a trip next week. A, lo a <coughs> Semi-local trip. Well, yeah, um, <coughs> which my doctor knows about. Yeah. And everything's good. So this is how the medication comes. Um, depending on the medication, you can ask your pharmacy team if they can put it in certain um, delivery so, methods. Thank you. Delivery methods. I had a friend <coughs> at one point in the past um, on Facebook, she saw my post about my little IV bubbles. She's like, what's that? And she was a CF patient. And I was like, girl. That's an IV bubble. Um, and she had only ever had the home IV pole. And so she asked her team, and they were like, yeah, absolutely. So all they had to do was just switch the delivery system, and that's that. Sometimes it's not as easy as that. Sometimes some medications can't be put in those. Yeah. So these are like elastic balls that, uh, depending on what the dosage is and the timing of the dosage, uh, it delivers the drug in a certain amount of time at a certain, it'll have like a little, this thingy, like this goes in at 175 something, something. Milliliters per hour. Yep. And this is 250 milliliters. Yep. So I should really, I should hook up to that right now. So there's Wait, that. Wait, so that's over an hour? That's Wait, hot. that's not right, right? 70 minutes. Wow, that's a long one. 
And then this bag is my um, continuous bag. So I will hook up to uh, three of these per day and they will infuse over eight hours. So eight, 16, 24, it'll be a 24 hour infusion. Minus the 70 minutes that she's doing that. So we just like unhook this for that amount of time that she's doing the Cipro every eight hours and then hook up a new bag. Yep, and so I use the I wonder, pump. Um, do they have it programmed for seven or eight hours? They have it over eight hours. So that's, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So that's the drugs, and um, like Mary said, depending on what drugs she's on at the time, depends on how stable, how long it stays stable in the refrigerator. So some drugs aren't stable, and we have to mix them before uh, each dose, but thankfully... And tell them how, this go around. if they do have yep. to mix them, you can request. So like drugs like cholestin that you have to mix right before, like it doesn't stay stable. It's cholestin, right? I think so. I think cholestin, but um, doesn't stay stable and you have to mix it. You can request from your home care company. And I, I think we, you know, we had to like work with the home care company to figure out all the details of this. But whenever Mary goes on a drug like that, they send us... Uh, the eclipse balls or whatever you call the elastic balls um, that are full of saline or sterile water whatever the drug is mixed with and we mix it beforehand and shoot the drug into the ball before she hooks up. Oh what? Okay pause for this brief intermission as Mary's IV was exploding. I think I think the connection between the bubble and her cap wasn't right. It looked right and it still looks right, but it was like the medication was pouring out. Okay. Guess it's well, fine. we got that figured out. Anyways, I was saying you can mix the drug, put it in the Eclipse ball, and then you don't have to have an IV bag, which is uh, very convenient, especially at home. In the hospital, it doesn't matter all that much because you're stuck in a hospital room but at home you can move around and that's one of the benefits of starting IVs at home is that Mary can stay active as she can I mean obviously she's um, not feeling well but I think it's good for the mind and like your spirits to be able to like continue with life in the midst of doing treatment but, but then at the same time, it's tricky being at home because you are at home. It's hard to actually put a pause and like mm. rest yeah. and try to heal. Yeah. But it's that weird balance because it is good to stay active and keep your lungs moving and stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also beneficial to like literally sit. Yeah. For a long I th time. I think it really comes down to knowing what your body needs during that season of home IVs or yeah, hospital IVs. Like, does your body need to keep pushing or does your body need to rest, like you were saying? And sometimes for, I know for like you at times, like the hospital is a necessary like detox of life, you know, where you're just like stopping everything and it's really good <coughs> to get that chest PT four times a day or whatever. The last time, this very last time I started IVs, we started them at home for the first like four or five days. Right. Yeah. And that was great because I, my body tends to get a reaction to the medications. So I will typically get a fever and vomiting like after the second or third dose. So within about a day or so. And you're just more comfortable doing that at home than basically. in the hospital. Yeah. That's and what so, it comes down to. Hopefully, we're hoping that going on continuous, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe, I think we've maybe concluded that sometimes that helps with the reaction Mary gets, but I don't know. We'll see. It's all a mystery, yeah, but a we'll mystery. bring you along with us, and thank you so much for cheering us on. I really appreciate it, and as, as always, we, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good, Good night. night. Oh. What? Ollie. After party with the Ollie boy. Hey Ollie, where you at, bro? I'm gonna get you. You not down here? Ollie? Are you on the bed upstairs? <gasps> there you are. You almost missed the end sleep.